It's Linux gaming time once again, and it's time for another update. As you guys know, I am constantly updating and going on the absolute bleeding edge of Linux just so you can kind of see where it's going or where it will be in about three months to six months. And God, every time I cover this topic, it's about once every month or two. Uh, I think the last one I did was Linux gaming leveled up. Well, it just leveled up once again or super duper ultra leveled up all the buzzwords right here. So with that, let's go over what's happening in Linux gaming once again. Uh, and also I'm coming covering two projects on this one because really two projects that I've briefly covered uh, on the channel before and one that actually got introduced in Twitch live stream to me today. And I wanted to cover both of them as it just kind of enhances the Linux gaming experience and kind of brings apart some modding capabilities to gaming. Because a lot of people are like, well, on Windows, I might use SweetFX and make Skyrim or Fallout look a little bit better. You really can't do that on Linux. And to you, sir, I say, not anymore. Because guess what? You can do that. So let's cover that project. And then also I want to cover Glorious Egg Roll. I've talked about him a couple times on the channel, but I wanted to do a deeper dive in this video and kind of cover his project, his passion project, and uh, really kind of help him out because I think he needs a little love from the community. And I wanted to kind of point out his contributions because without him, I think a lot of uh, Linux gaming wouldn't be as far as it is. And it's really amazing. And I'm constantly using his versions of stuff and I'm a proud Patreon of his, as I really love a lot of his works. So with all that said, let's get into some Linux gaming and uh, two awesome projects that we're going to go over. The Sweet FX Alternative in Linux, and then also Glorious Egg Roll uh, kind of leveling up Proton. So if you're a Steam user out there, man, you want to watch this because uh, Glorious Egg Roll just does a fantastic job in these releases. So let's get into it. All right, let's start this off with Glorious Egg Roll. This guy makes so many contributions to the community that I just would be remiss without showing some of his social media stuff. You can reach him on Twitter at Glorious Egg Roll. Also, he's on Patreon, Glorious Egg Roll for the Patreon. I'll leave the links down in the description as I really want to see this guy get more love because, man, some of his contributions are fantastic. He only has 17 patrons. Uh, let's see if we can't at least get him to like 30 or something after this video is aired because, man, I don't know where we'd be exactly uh, as a community without some of his contrib contributions. As far as Proton goes, his addition of Pro Proton's better than what Valve puts out. I mean, it's like this awesome, just sweet addition of Proton that I, I just, ah, I can't explain it. You know what? Let's go over to his GitHub and just download it and show you because... Uh, after this, you're gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go sign up for at least a dollar, dollar a month for this guy, uh, just because Glorious Egg Roll is amazing for what he does. So over here, go to GitHub.com forward slash Glorious Egg Roll. Both the G and the E is capitalized, and then he has Proton dash G E Custom. G stands for Glorious Egg Roll. If we go into releases over here, you'll see he's been releasing. He has 66 releases. So, man, think of the hours and hours, days, if not, of that he spent making this for us. So, big shout out to him. I just love it. So, with this one, let's go ahead and download this version, No Mouse Cord, uh, Proton 5. You can actually see all the additions and fixes he's done for, like, Black Ops 2 and just some just general fixes in all. So, very neat. Uh, read through some of the patch notes he's done. Each time he makes one of these, it seems like... There's a huge amount of pack patch notes. So here we go. Let's download it and install this guy. I'll show you real fast how it's done. We just click download. It is a little bit sizable download. It's a 400 meg download, but it comes with a lot of bells and whistles. Uh, some big things which I love about the Glorious Egg Roll Edition and why I use it a lot is one, uh, I'm a big Bethesda guy as far as Skyrim and Fallout goes. I like playing those, but the audio is always usually jacked up. Uh, Glorious Egg Roll Editions almost always fix that. And just the performance is a lot better with Glorious Egg Roll's edition. Like every single one I've tried has outperformed the official Proton version, just to give you an idea. So I always say 
download it like I'm doing here and try it for yourself because it is simply amazing what Glorious Egg Roll does. So with that said, I'll let this finish downloading and then we'll extract it. We'll go ahead, extract Proton 5. We'll just put it in our downloads folder and then uh, go ahead and take it from there. So we've extracted that. We're going to grab this folder, cut it, and we're going to go back to Steam. So if we go to our home directory, .steam, uh, go into root, you'll see compatibility tools .d. If you don't have this folder, go ahead and go up, come up to your file explorer, create a new folder, call it compatibility tools, all one word, dot d so with that we'll open up this directory i already have 4.21 glorious egg roll edition it's time to do an upgrade so i've pasted this in here it's all ready to go we'll go over here i'm going to go ahead and exit my steam and then i'll just relaunch steam all right we're back into steam i'm going to go into properties and go all the way down and choose glorious egg roll edition so it's the default for all my games so under settings, go down to Steam Play and then choose Glorious Egg Roll Edition. Or if you just make sure that's ticked, you can actually just uh, specify specific games, which it'll work better for. So uh, it's up to you what you choose. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and restart Steam again and make Glorious Egg Rolls Edition my default, as I find it works pretty much great with everything. So let's come into library. Path of Exile is one of my favorite games. Uh, we'll go to properties and we can force it to use whatever version we want. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put version 5 in because I, I'm almost certain it always works really good with it. I, I know a lot of people in the Linux community always harp on me for using Path of Exile. They're like, Titus, it's horrible with it. a lot of the Linux compatibility. You should show a title that plays better than Windows. Why are you always playing these titles that are always struggle with Linux? And I'm like, because I want to show people the absolute worst case scenario. I don't want to show them the best case and get their hopes up. I want them to show them the worst case and then have them jump in Linux and go, holy crap, this is amazing. This is a way better than what Titus said uh, was on his video. And then they start playing it. And sure enough, it plays fantastic. So I've done a lot of videos on this one. Let's go ahead, launch into Path of Exile. I'll go ahead and do a little quick run through here. Uh, let's make sure on our titles we got on the launch options. Yeah. Just want to show some FPS here. You know what? I'm feeling spicy today. We're going to go ahead and put it to full instead of just FPS. Throw a whole bunch of stuff up on the screen. Make it look super cool for everyone. All right, here we go. So we got a whole bunch of stuff on the left-hand side here. The DXVK version I'm currently on. Uh, what we're using, we're using D3D11. So we're Direct3D11. Um, this is the ACO compiler, which I've already done a video on that one. Check it out. ACO is freaking awesome. So uh, great. Vulcan, we're using 1.1. Um, driver's 19.99. Uh, and you just kind of get some extra feel here. You got the FPS here, and then you also got uh, some, some frame stuff here. So let's go ahead and log in. And we'll play my old school guy. This is one of my first Path of Exile characters. I really need to find some more time to play Path of Exile, but... I just haven't yet. I absolutely love Path of Exile, though. All right, so we're in game here. Uh, usually you get a couple stutters out of the gate. You can kind of see the stutters. If we get any micro stutters like that, you should see little red lines on this section, too. So it gives a little bit better one. I like using the Ravage Square because you get a lot of movement, uh, other things. Also, since this is Linux, you do have some shader compiles. However, with ACO, you will notice that it does really, really well at the compile times. But if you're using like an NVIDIA card and, you know, you haven't really messed around too much with this, you're probably not going to do real well with like an old Ubuntu one running an NVIDIA uh, driver. So with that said, let's go around and see what we can do. See what shenanigans we can get to. And you got some good drop frames here. And it doesn't really not, not really performing that great on this version. Let's see what we got. Yeah, you can see the frame times are having troubles with this version. Not quite as smooth as the 4.2 version, it looks like. But let's see if it smooths out by the time we get to the center of the square. And a little lag there. You saw the little red peak. Oh, good, good peak there. 
So this one's actually not doing all that well, as, as we can see from the actual compilers. And it could be just something with the system, too. But usually, I think the last one I did did a little bit better, but it's getting close. It, it's, it's playable, nonetheless, nonetheless. Ooh, look at that. So all those red lines, I don't really like that. Let's Let's quit out. Let's go to 4.21 just to see what we get. Just to give a comparison between 5.0, which is just, it, it's a release candidate or just came out of release candidate. So it's, it's brand new. I know he's still kind of working on that one. Uh, let's see what this one gives us. All right, logging back in. So be looking for these red lines as usually that means like a, a drop frame. All right, we're in game. And over to the Ravage Square we'll go. We'll see what we get. All right, here we go. See, this is also the interesting thing about wine too. Not every edition of wine is created equal. I can tell you already it's a smoother experience. You can see it on the actual graph there as we were dropping a ton of frames before we even hit the, the square before. So, oh, it's so cool. I love, I love seeing performance tests uh, as kind of just gives a good feeling for, for everyone. Let's see if we can't find that one guy where we engaged and we dropped a ton of frames last time let's see let's see if we can't find that guy where is he oh there he is now the boss but not not the one I think we hit last time all right well I've kind of gone through this whole main square as it settled in after about 30 seconds I literally got no drop frames on 4.21 but just for com complete sake, let's go ahead, drop this down to the official Proton version, just so you can see what Glorious Egg Roll has done uh, based on like the original one. Now, right now, I think the official Proton's 4.11, and uh, we were running 4.21, pretty much that perfect frame uh, where you saw almost no drop frames. Now, let's see what 4.11 does. Now, this is still using the ACO, and I still have some other optimizations on here, uh, but so great. All right, here we go. It's gonna be 4.11. Let's see what we get. This is the non-Glorious Egg Roll version. So this is the official one from Steam. All right, so let's uh, go ahead, head on over to the Ravage Square, dropping some frames here in the beginning, but we ran into that on every single test. Let's see how it looks while we get to the square and see how many drop frames we get. All right, starting out, a couple drop frames. Drop frame. Lots and lots and lots of drop frames. Oh my god, this is not playable. All right, all right, let's see. Usually it usually smooths out a little bit. This is the official one, so this is not the uh, Glorious Egg Roll product, so it's not quite as good. And I'm going to try and point out any drop frames I run into. There's a drop frame. All right, we're to the square. Usually when we get to the center here, we might run into some more when we get a little more traffic. Couple drop frames there during the battle. Usually that was like the first time I used my uh, ability, so there's another drop frame. Another drop frame. And I think this is pretty much, uh, it seems like, uh, yeah, there's some drop frames in here too. All right, so it, it's pretty much smoothed out. I would say this is definitely the worst performer as to be expected is, is Proton 4.11, so. It's like living six months to a year in the past, but this is what most people use. So I wanted to give like, hey, the stock experience, what most people can grow to expect. And then I wanted to give the, the best experience, which is 4.21. This is the proven one that Glorious Egg Rolls really kind of worked out. And then 5.0 is kind of like the new hotness. For certain games, that one will work a little bit better. Like let's say you're running uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto 5. I think 5.0 will perform a little bit better than 4.21, but you kind of tinker with both. I like to have both installed. As you saw, you know, a lot of people are like, well, why didn't you uninstall 4.21? Cer certain games, it, it responds better depending on the version. Um, but needless to say, I wanted to at least give kind of an overview of what to expect. All right, on to the next project here at VK Basalt. I'm probably saying that wrong, but whatever. Uh, Vulcan uh, post-processing layer is what it is. Just think of sweet FX, but for Linux. That's what VK Basalt is. Let me show you how to install that real fast. We just go down to releases, 
just go to the latest release. Dot three is right now, so it's not even hit a one dot o release yet. But I just kind of want to show you guys what what's happening. You can use this with pretty much any release. Uh, you do need Vulcan one dot one. As I was playing Path of Exile, you probably saw that we are on one dot one, so we can use this one. Uh, just simply download the zip file, go ahead and extract VK Basalt. I already did that, and then you kind of have this folder. So uh, let's install this in your system. So this is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. All you need to do is go into your downloads, uh, the extracted folder, VK Basalt, and then just make install. You don't need to run it as sudo or anything. It's pretty much all there, ready to go. Um, and then you can configure this by this config file right here. So let's just uh, gedit and edit this config file. At the very beginning, the effects. This is actually by default set to just CAS. We want to make sure to add this line, CMAA colon CAS. Uh, this will give us a little bit more. So as you see the example here, that's all we did was just expand that so we can get the enhanced subpixel morphological anti-aliasing enabled. Man, that's a mouthful, but man, it sounds super cool. I think we should try this out and then jump back in the game. So how do we enable this post-processing effects for our games? That's what we want to know. So let's go ahead and jump back over here. But usage, all we have to do is enable VK Basalt and then the game, or um, you can do it if you're doing it through Lutris, you can just go add and then under the environmental variables, put enable VK Basalt key equals one under value. But since we're using Steam, we're gonna need this command right here. Let's copy that guy over into Path of Exile, try it out. So we're gonna actually put this back on 4.21. That's the, the sweet spot, something we really enjoyed. And we'll put that in there. There's a space between my HUD and VK Basalt and then the command. So I uh, should see some cool stuff happening here. Let's hit play a game and get in and check it out. Let's see if you see any of the post-processing differences between the two. All right, we're in game. I can already kind of tell a little bit as far as the, the actual textures. You can kind of see it's a, just a little smoother. Look at those effects. Just a little more crisp, a little bit more going on with the post-processing. It's subtle, but man, just that subtle difference, man. Oh, it's so cool. I, I dig it. I dig the little sweet effects style uh, look here we got have we now have in Linux. I mean, most people just don't even realize and go, oh, you can't mod Linux. You can't do things like uh, you do in Windows. And well, that's just simply not true. All right, we got one drop frame. I'm still still in drop frame mode, but let's get to the square real fast just so you can kind of see, man, God, that looks cool. That just looks cool. I don't care who you are. pretty smooth that is pretty darn smooth and this is a game that's really not optimized i really should show a different game but i don't care i like playing the games that no one likes to play on linux all right well i don't want to do just sit here and play path of exile the whole time i just kind of wanted to show you guys how awesome it's become god it's so cool so so that is the new next level of Linux gaming. I absolutely love that we have all these people coming into the Linux gaming community, or maybe it's always been there and I just didn't know about them. Uh, Flightless Mango has a YouTube channel. Again, check him out as he has fantastic benchmarks, things that I simply have never done, nor I don't think I can do, not without putting a substantial amount of time commitment in. So check out his if you're interested in those Linux versus Windows benchmarks and those types of things. So with that all said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video.